Harbor. What's up, everybody? This is Agast Lee Stamus, back with another episode of My Gaming Diary on the Ratting Off Infinity Gaming Channel on YouTube. Here with yet another session in Assetto Corsa, continuing race week in this segment of My Gaming Diary. So, having one issue that I don't particularly care for, which is, uh... Okay, so we got some good old time attack, which is, uh, that... Let's go inside the cockpit. How do I do that again? Uh, check out the BMW interior. Uh, I need to get that hood changed at kilometers per hour. I mean, nuts. Okay, so we may be playing this again. Okay, so there's the back down interior view. Okay, so maybe the sound audio isn't off. It felt like, uh, when I first started, so this is the track that I played last time in the other, in the Alfa Romeo. So, like I said, we're back with some um, Assetto Corsa. It sounds like I fixed the audio mix problem from last time, too. I may still be a little loud, but, uh... It sounds like I fixed the audio problem last time, where I had the audio only coming out of one channel. And I'm getting a chance to drive the BMW M3, so this is a significantly more powerful car than they have allowed me to drive to this point. So, as we are... Always do on an episode of My Getting Diary. Let me go ahead and run down the hardware that's in play, and just in case I flub my intro. Again, my name is Agassiz Stamus from GearWorks.com and the E2KG Network. Producer and editor on uh, all of our shows for the time being. So, so uh, tonight. Uh, like I said, I'm playing a set of courses for the PC, playing over on what I call Desktop 2, which is a workstation that is that is powered by a uh, Intel Core i3, uh, 7320 KB Lake processor, so that is the uh, highest end of the Core i3 line. I think there's one other processor now that's out, it's like a 7320 or 7400 HQ or Q, something like that. Um, it has uh, 32 gigabytes of, uh, I think, DDR4 2133 megahertz RAM. Uh, I went back and looked it up on my Facebook page, and it's actually, I thought this was DDR3, and I thought it was 1866, but I think it's actually DDR4 2133. Uh, and this power, um, uh, storage is handled by a, a 4 terabyte 7200 RPM Seagate drive. And uh, the game engine is powered by a uh, NVIDIA GeForce GTX 1060 6GB uh, GPU uh, provided by Zotac in a uh, mini board form factor. So it's a half-length board, uh, which helped a lot in making this build, because uh, I would have definitely had some clearance problems. Uh, for the game capture, game capture and uh, video and audio production, um, what I have in play is uh, the Avermedia Game Capture HD2, which is a standalone uh, game capture box. Which I really uh, enjoy. Uh, I definitely like my other cards that work with a PC, but what's really nice here is, um, is uh, I do not require a PC to be in the loop to do a game capture here. Um, it just runs on its own power. It also has uh, an integrated hard drive bay in the underbelly, so I have placed a one terabyte, two and a half inch uh, hard drive uh, there. And so I can kind of record to my heart's content without too much concern. 
uh, for uh, not using a webcam uh, this week because uh, I would have to uh, record that via a PC or use something like my Contour Room 3 or Panasonic HDC HS80 as uh, standalone and then um, mix that video in uh, once I'd extracted the game video and, and overlaid it. So one of the reasons I go back and forth with, with different equipment is, well, one of the reasons is to test it all out and be able to report to you guys uh, what works best or what my personal preferences are. Um, but, uh, but also, uh, to kind of have a dither, uh, on the, on the channel and on my website that kind of goes back and forth between higher quality recordings versus ones that are quick and easy so I don't get burnt out, uh, constantly going through this hamster wheel every week. So... Over commentary, I'm using the a pair of uh, Thrustmaster Y300 CPX Doom Edition headset. Uh, so it has a boom microphone uh, for the voiceover commentary, and then uh, kind of has these old-style military uh, ear cups and headband. So I typically find uh, audio to be very crisp coming out of this headset although it may not always be the highest quality. Uh, in between the Game Capture HD2 and the Thrustmaster Y300 CPX, I also am using my Behringer Xenus 302 USB hardware mixer. So the Game Capture HD2 has uh, two 3.5mm ports in front of it for microphone in and headphone out. Um, the uh, Thrustmaster, however, terminates in just a single combo, three and a half millimeter jack. So, uh, so what I'm doing is a little complicated, but um, so I have uh, I have uh, adapter cables that I use. Uh, one thing, if you're going to be doing game capture streaming, you're definitely just going to need a bucket of cables. <laughs> Just recommend you keep all sorts on hand so that they can handle all of your different configurations and setups. Um, of course, if you're the type of person who just streams from one system uh, all the time, then you kind of don't need that. Uh, I, I'm a gamer who streams from different gaming PCs, uh, which may not be a general use case, but, but there are plenty of people who stream and game capture probably uh, on PC, Xbox One, and PlayStation 4, and maybe even the Switch. So. Each of those uh, offers a slightly different uh, challenge and configuration and setup, so you may just want, I, I've just gone to keeping a ton of, uh, not a ton, but like a couple dozen probably different uh, audio jack cables to handle uh, different scenarios as needed. So so what I'm doing in this case is I, uh, I have uh, two cables uh, um, that both uh, terminate on one end with a single 3.5mm jack, and then on the other end they then split um, out into uh, left and right channel RCA connectors. So I've got the two 3.5mm jacks, uh, you know, the two cables plugged in to the Game Capture HD2. And then uh, for the headphones, uh, I bring them back uh, to the uh, line in RCA channels on my hardware mixer. Um, and then I, for the headphone, uh, I, uh, I put the uh, RCA connectors into the main mix output of the hardware mixer. Then I have a splitter cable that takes the uh, Thrustmaster Y300 CPX uh, single pole 3.5mm jack and splits that into discrete headphone and microphone channels. And I uh, have that plugged in to the right hand, upper right hand corner of the Behringer Xenus 302 USB. Uh, where it has connections for uh, for uh, three and a half millimeter connections for headphones and microphone, and so the, uh, the microphone comes out of the single three and a half millimeter jack that the splitter cable from the Y300 CPX is plugged into, 
then it goes over to the main mix uh, output as left and right channel, goes into that cable, left and right channel connectors, and then it goes over to the Game Capture HD2 and plugs in over a single 3.5mm jack. And pretty much the headphones work the same way, just in the opposite direction. I should also mention tonight I'm playing with the um, Thrust, Thrustmaster uh, Ferrari 458 Italia Special Edition uh, Wheel and Pedals. Um, and I have the game configured to just accept that as an Xbox 360 <coughs> wired controller for PC input, and it works great. Uh, that was what kind of one of the codes that I had to unlock. Is um, I mentioned to my co-host on the uh, Enough to Keep Going podcast, which we recorded earlier tonight, uh, how I've spent, how I'd spent almost the better part of a year <clears throat> trying to figure out how to get this wheel and pedals to work, uh, just constantly spending hours and hours struggling with it. So I don't know if I've exceeded some limit um, of uh, penalty points where it's just not going to let me pass this event. So if I come back around on this corner... Nope. <laughs> I was just about to say, if this didn't uh, roll over, I was going to be out. So this is one of the weaknesses of a Seto Corsa. It does not really have very intuitive or descriptive uh, menu systems. So you just have to kind of reason that this is restart the event, uh, watch the replay, and exit. Some people, that may not be entirely intuitive. I don't know what the heck this means. Did I pass the event? Uh, yeah, I actually gold coined it. I will readily admit I just kind of have no idea in time attack. Uh, what's what criteria specifies whether you pass or fail? So I just accept it. <laughs> Okay, so I think I'm done with this uh, Stage 1, N1 career. Yep. Alright, so I'm going on to N2. A little disappointed that my career progress hasn't step increased. It was already at 4% uh, when I came into here. There's 27 series... I'm going to be occupied for quite a while. So I don't know if I've gotten, I may have barely gotten this far uh, in my other single-player campaign, which I think is on des is over on desktop one. All right, here we go. I can see. Yeah, I keep forgetting how do you get in the cockpit. It's pretty. Ooh, it's a nice dashboard. So there are lots of great racing games that a lot of me and a lot of my friends are playing. Uh, Norfolk Blue, who I guess gave me the hand wave to my channel. I hand wave back at him. Uh, plays a lot of uh, Project Cars. Uh, and I like Project Cars too. Uh, this, okay, this is the number Ring Formula One track. with a mobile application 
uh, called GameMate, provided by Avermedia and deployed to both the iOS App Store and the Google Play Store. And for the time that I've owned it, it's, I've really controlled it with that app. And, and one of the things I like about that app is it gives you a really big time display. Um, because I'm really bad about not watching my gameplay session time um, and running over and then the video being too long. And uh, while I do some video editing now of game capture content, at the end of the day, uh, my life would be best uh, if I didn't have to do any video editing at all. So I'd still try and keep that to a minimum. I really just like to post the recordings as I record them. Now I'm going to video edit this, and uh, just to add some, uh, some overlays and emblematics, um, but, uh... But yeah, so a few sessions ago I was using, uh, the GameMate application, and it desynchronized, uh, with the, uh, Game Capture HD 2, uh, and when I did that, uh, the game capture HD2 responded by crashing. And I actually thought that I had lost the recording that I had, that I was in the middle of. Uh, fortunately, I actually hadn't. Uh, it didn't appear readily in the media menu when I went onto the actual device and tried to find the video. Um, but after I'd rebooted it like a couple times for other reasons, uh, suddenly it showed up uh, in the menu. So, I was glad that I hadn't completely lost that recording. But what it, what it drove me to do was I said, yep, uh, I'm not using the app anymore uh, to do these recordings. I'll just use the standalone controls now. The Game Capture HD 2 has two methods of starting the video. It does actually come with a little tiny remote control, which is more often than not is what I wind up using. Uh, but it also has a... Uh, launch recording push button actually physically on the front of the device, so I've been using that tonight, um, just on a whim. Now, I am very tired, uh, I'm starting to get a little loopy, so if I talk about something that seems completely random, I, you'll understand where that's coming from. You know, these 
distances, and these distances and the lengths of the laps are definitely different for each player. Some like them, some don't. I'm kind of in between. I mean, I definitely like running a short, tight track. Um, that also helps me in terms of that's then something that I can focus on right before I start to drift off. But I appreciate the, uh, the increased complexity and the different driving style retired, required of uh, and these in, you know, medium-sized tones and some uh, wider straightaways where you can wind up getting people going three and five wide in this game. to wrap this up before I really fade out. Alright, got some opponents on the track now.
experience, thank you. Got a ton of damage to the front door. The position am I in? This is another thing that I've mentioned is a pain in this game is uh tell you where you are all the time. Is that graphic down at the bottom of the screen only updates when you get to the uh, end of an actual lap. And as you can see, there's not a... Uh... Oh, looks like I'm at six, so I'm gonna stick with this and see if I can pull off. It's five, four, three are ahead of me, so... I think one of the things is that with no rear spoiler on the back of this, yeah, because the spoiler should increase its lift. I think one thing is I gotta get back on the gas once I feel like I've got the vehicle back under control. Maybe using something less than full throttle on every single corner. Yeah, so the damage wasn't enough to fully take me out, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to recover those three places. Well, the only way to recover it, right, is to. Oh, uh, no! Uh, because I flew off the track. Last, because I flew off the track on the first lap, I didn't even have time to consciously register that uh, they changed the chicane on this, and it's actually more like the actual Formula One setup. So I was supposed to slow down for eight seconds, but I don't know how I could ever tell whether I have satisfied that penalty or not. So I have not been able to figure out how to turn off the racing line. I typically prefer to run without those. But uh, since they have been up and I'm noticing them, I, what I haven't been able to detect is that those racing... Whether or not those... It feels like those racing lines are just laid down... Like, in one way, and that's how they always appear, whereas I would argue that... Okay, but uh, on a lap when I'm coming around at a higher speed, then shouldn't, uh, should I get more red, you know, further advance of the turn than I normally would, but it looks like they're just static. Which, uh, you know, has been some of the criticism of this game, so the, this game did really well on PC, but when it made the leap to consoles, man, people, like, really took it to town. And I think one of the reasons is because of things like these racing lines, and I'm not sure people notice the same things that I do, and that's what they called out. Counter steer. Here's <laughs> on the final lap. Man, why is it? This car is getting way too upset for me to do my typical thing of just 
wildly and crazily uh, uh, breaking late. I'm making some room. I'm making some best with this. This is one thing I don't like about this game, I will say, is as physically accurate as it's trying to be and as complex a physics engine as it's trying to put up, like you get like no telemetry to help you tell what the condition of your car is and kind of where you are. Okay. don't have time to squeeze in another race. Uh, so we were... Like almost two tenths of a second difference. It's close. Real close. Not many of us in the BMW Z4, but I will take it. Ah, bronze. Well, I came in third, so that is appropriate. Never ring sprint. Didn't run. One more race and then uh, call it a night. stopping point. Uh, I gotta race this car. Alright, here we go. Now this should be the exact same track. So I can do a little better and not dig myself into a hole like I did the last race. off to as good a start, but again, it's much more so an attribute directly of the car, the fact that this car is maybe not as fast as a uh, Z4, yeah, well, okay, that's my fault, <laughs> let's restart the session, the car obviously doesn't corner as much, interesting that they just start you right on the track without that opening graphic. Over 
steer as much. Jason, for me, presents a problem because I'm a driver who prefers oversteer more than anything. That's just my particular reason to stop. One thing I definitely need to get the Forza eyes and do more looking ahead in the track. Thinking about driving where I'm going to rather than watching myself all the way through the turn. Rather, or rather than driving the car out of wherever I am. You know what I mean. I said I was tired. This car is more sure footed going through that particular turn than the Z4 was. Z4 just got all kinds of upset. Okay, so it's the longer chicane. It's a key thing I need to understand coming around the back end of this turn, coming around on the front street. Just a 
just need to drive like this for the whole race for the remainder. I'm down at the point now where I have to know where these guys are. Now this decreases my ability to manage the car around the turn. I just Flashback, no replay, no rewinding back to cover from a mistake. Now my problem is, is I drive a lot slower when I'm defending, which means, yeah, I'm driving in cockpit and now I can kind of fend these guys off. Uh, it's going to give me a tendency to sometimes upset the car more than I would like to. Uh, now that I'm in cockpit, I cannot see and get a good sense of the lateral G attitude of the car, and that may cause me to spin it. Where is this guy in order? Okay, there he is. Oh, man, this is only a second or two or four laps. So, 
I would definitely like to get back out of the cockpit at this point, but because I've been racing like this for three laps, I'm just going to go ahead and maintain this and just, fingers crossed, I can pull it off. So I may, I'm watching him, I may have to block him off one more time. Like, I think I'm going to have to... I think I'm pretty good. In fact, I could kind of back off on being so aggressive, right, and just uh, be happy with second place. What I really want to make sure is that this orange guy doesn't get up on me. Alright, well that's apparently how we do. It's always weirds me out how this game, how these races end. <laughs> don't just fade out, they, they take you back to the pit. I don't understand that. Alright, so a little nerve-wracking. Actually, only wound up beating that guy. <laughs> 0.253 thousandths of a second. So the set of course, is... And again, I love racing games. I am not the best racing gamer by any means, but uh, this game is really well tuned to my uh, capability level with a, a good solid amount of difficulty, um, while not being entirely overbearing. I think that's an achievement. And I unlocked the N3. Uh, um, so yeah, so with, with the settings tuned right, like I get a really challenging set of racing like I just did, uh, and, and, and feel really accomplished uh, by pulling that off. I get it, and I get it, I know other people are more skilled and could have probably done it at a higher difficulty level and blah blah blah, but it's not about them, it's about me and my gaming uh, experience. So that's going to do it for me, thanks so much for joining in, I hope this turns out well, it feels like it did. Um, so. Uh, if you're joining in, um, and it is, uh, and I get this up, uh, if I get it up in time, I'm not sure if I will, uh, but if it's before noon on the 29th of June, if you go back one video and look at that Assetto Corsa Let's Play, uh, there is a link in there to uh, register for an Amazon giveaway uh, of a uh, first-person shooter gaming mouse. Uh, I think it's a HyperX. Um, so... That's not a bad deal. You can definitely uh, partake of that and go back and, and, and uh, register. And if you win, you know, it's it's no skin off my nose whether or not you just checked in here for the first time or you're a long-time viewer. Uh, it's all good. Um, and maybe I'll continue to do those giveaways from time to time depending on the response that I see. So go over there, watch that other video uh, f for a little bit, and uh, put your name in the hat uh, to get that, uh, that gaming mouse. So... Thanks so much for joining in for this episode of My Gaming Diary on the Routing Off Infinity Gaming Channel on YouTube. My name has been Agassically Stamus from Gearworks.com and the E2KG Network podcast channel on YouTube. Please uh, head over there and check those uh, videos out for both of those channels and like or dislike and give me some uh, feedback on what I can do better. And uh, if you're really into it, go ahead and subscribe so you just get notified and you can see when there's something posted that you like. And then you can just come over and check it out uh, via the notification that you get via email. So thanks so much for joining in. That's going to do it for me. I'm out of here.